Welcome to Viral History. This week we've come to Creswell Crags in Derbyshire to get a private view of a truly unique discovery. So Paul, can you tell us about this amazing space we're stood in right now? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So this space you're in now is at the very rear of um, a cave we call Robin Hood Cave. Mm -hmm. Um, We're in a a far cavern with a a dark hole underneath. (laughs) Surrounding that hole are ritual protection marks on every surface. Um, The only areas where you don't see marks is where we have a particular flowstone, which Mm. would have been extremely difficult Mm -hmm. um, to make engravings onto. But where a mark can be made, from Mm -hmm. the ceiling to the sides here, where a mark can be made, there are marks. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, The marks that you see here, um, the academics we've spoken to, they believe these marks have been made over a 300-year period. Wow. um, And all of these... As they are ritual protection marks, we yeah. assume that they've been driven by fear or superstition. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so with this number, uh, you might imagine that they had a lot to be fearful of. course, of. yeah. So presumably, um, because these marks are not near the cave entrance, people who were coming here and making marks, were they fearful of what was coming out of the cave, out of this hole in the ground here? Yeah, I think, the, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good point. Because the marks that we're aware of are traditionally found on doorways and windows to Mm. keep evil or evil spirits, demons out, which is. Here we have, um, uh, if you imagine the Victorian period uh, or earlier, they would have come here with um, candles, Mm -hmm. lanterns, and they may not have been able to see down to the bottom. So it may have looked like it it went a long way down. Um, uh, There's also, you might notice, a silver element yeah, yeah. Um, on the ceiling so this might have had some association oh, oh yeah there's loads being... of these sil- the silver deposits are they yes, yeah yeah and, and sparkling and <laughs> so it may have been given meaning as a mm. consequence mm-hmm. so you're quite right there's a there's a, a a hole in the ground and around that there are the marks and so we assume mm-hmm. that there was a fear of something coming out of that hole right yeah. from below yeah something mm. from i mean w- theoretically that could be hell or just something that they fear uh, bad luck Uh or or evil may be coming out of and that's why they went to the the lens but we'll never know for definite but that that's certainly what it appears to be yeah so um can you date these marks are there any dates or you know or do you is it just sort of speculation at this point well we can to a certain extent um we believe that they were made over at least a 300 year period mm-hmm. um, there are some dates um, that and some um, particular um, styles mm-hmm. which make us think that they are um, from uh, the 1600s to the 1900s but those dates are from the point at which a certain style goes out of use right so it could be a lot earlier than that yeah so for instance one of the marks is an i with a cross over it oh, which right. is which is oh, a yeah. latin can see, j see that one up there yeah <laughs> yeah and well that's that's apparently we're told um a reference to a latin j and it's to reference jesus on the cross uh, and we're told yeah. that that went out of use at a certain point right so we date it at the point it went out of use right okay Right. Because there's no way of knowing mm. whether mm-hmm. it was earlier than that. Exactly. But yeah. one of the things you so okay so it was it it was over a we believe three hundred period year period maybe more. Mm-hmm. But one of the things to make note of is that it was constantly updated. Yes. So during the that three hundred year or more period, um, the people that made the marks kept returning to this yeah. cavern. Yeah. So then you have the question. Why did they keep returning? Mm. Was the protection that they mm. were putting around this cave considered not enough mm-hmm. to to deal with the the um, uh, the fears or or, yeah. or what was going on in their life at the time? So presumably things like illnesses or you know um, bad harvests and weather and all these things. Do you think they might have been making marks to protect themselves well, against that? Well, that that would be my guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're talking about a period. Um, where we, we could be looking at the plague. Mm. The Civil War brought a lot of upheaval to right. the area, okay, a lot yeah. of changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the interesting thing is, of course, we're living through a period of change right now. Mm. And so it's really interesting that we've discovered these yes. now. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll need to make our own marks. Um, <laughs> but the... Um, 
Yeah, I think I think we we won't know what that is. Mm -hmm. But one of the the interesting things about that subject is that there was a small village at the end of the gorge of mm -hmm. five cottages. Right. I don't know about you, but this looks like it was made by more than a small hamlet Absolutely. worth of people. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, and then that leads us to ask, um, could this have potentially become a place of pilgrimage mm. in order to, to record mm. um, your, uh, your fearful marks? Mm. This, is, this site is obviously more renowned for the Ice Age findings. Yes. So... Um, could the association with the marks on the other side of the gorge mm. have um, have have resulted in this site mm. becoming known as the place where you come and make yeah. your mark? Because it's quite a sacred place, <coughs> isn't it? Uh, you know, I can imagine people being drawn here time and again. Yeah, well, we don't know what people made of the of the Ice Age mm -hmm. art from the other side, so mm. we don't know what meaning they placed on that. Yeah. So if they did place a meaning on mm -hmm. that. And then as a consequence, the site mm. had um, an association. For one thing, I would imagine they would have found unusual bones here and things like yes, that. Yes, I was wondering that, uh, particularly <laughs> down this hole, you know, yeah. um, and whether, yeah. wondering whether anything had been found there. Uh, yeah, well, you're in a cave now where we've, this, is, this area here is where we've found uh, the largest quantity of, of finds from the Ice Age. Well, so yeah. they may have come across... Um, skeletal remains that yeah. are very unfamiliar to them. Right. In which case, yeah. you know, if you're finding if you're finding hyena and yeah. things like that here, mm. um, what are you going to think about, about these caves? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, there is there, we found no written records yet to, right. to substantiate that. Okay. But we we can assume that that if the Victorian archaeologists found these things. Um, there's no reason to think that other people didn't find something mm. unusual. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't believe that all of this isn't in some way connected yeah, to the, the uniqueness of the site as mm. well mm -hmm. um, and that that may have driven some of the fear as well. Mm. Yeah, wonderful. So um, can you tell us what we're looking at here? You, do you, yes. I mean, have you deciphered some <coughs> of the markings? Because uh, there yeah. are lots, <laughs> absolutely loads. Yeah, I can. A lot of the, the lettering you see mm -hmm. um, relates to Latin phrases, and mm -hmm. you'll have to forgive me, I'm not going to be able to tell you in the Latin. Mm -hmm. The most common phrase you can see looks like a W, but if you yeah. look closer, mm -hmm. it's actually two Vs um, oh, across yes. each other. Can and see. that's, um, so that's Virgin of Virgins. Right. And, and as you turn it upside down, it then becomes an M okay. for the Virgin Mary as well. Oh, so, right, yeah. yeah. Um, and... Um, and a lot of the a lot of the the symbols similarly date uh, or refer back to to religious um, icons, religious mm. um, uh, individuals. Um, and um, one of the interesting things about that, of course, is a lot of them um, would make you think they're pre-Reformation because mm. if you're referring to the the Virgin Mary. Um, but they were made during a period where it was never safe to be. Mm. Um, uh, a Catholic, right. so yeah. we uh, we suspect that when they were making these um, religious marks, that they became the marks that you make um, if you want to protect yourself, mm -hmm. but not necessarily associating those marks with their original meaning. Yeah, uh, because it seems strange to completely cover a cave um, in marks which are, are associated with a faith for which you could be thrown into prison for. Of course, yeah. Risky uh, business. <laughs> as you can tell, there's more questions related to this space yeah. than there are answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So lovely. Um, I mean, do you know how many you've got here? Because there's so many, so many. Every, I mean, they're everywhere, literally everywhere. We don't. We've looked in um, nine of our caves so far and found marks everywhere, but none to the quantity we find mm. here. Mm -hmm. um, we are working with um, a university to do a scan of this space, but because the marks are over each other, mm. it's extremely difficult to count them. Yeah. Um, our research has shown that it was believed that the largest quantity of marks anywhere in the country was 57 in a cave in, uh, I believe it's Wiltshire or Somerset. Right. Um, 
we suspect we've got closer to a thousand, maybe mm-hmm. over a thousand. Wow. Oh my god. Uh, well, yes, it, I mean it was yeah. it was it's quite surprising for us because we're a heritage site. Yeah. So to one day discover you've got the largest collection <laughs> of anything in Britain, given that that's the nature of the work yeah. that we do, but um, a wonderful surprise. Is, uh, <laughs> a, a, is a wonderful surprise, for well, yes, yeah. or an embarrassment, um, but a nice a, a, yes, a nice embarrassment. Um, <laughs> and so now we're trying to share this with the public. Yeah, it's astonishing, though, isn't it? Absolutely astonishing. Wow. And I just, I can't get over the silver, just the sparkling, uh, just everywhere. I find it hard to believe that that wasn't part of what made this cave, the dark hole, the silver ceiling. Mm. I find it hard to believe that that deposit wasn't part of what made this cave um, uh, significant. Yeah. uh, And didn't, and also, as I say, with the, with the Ice Age deposits, um, part of the myth. Oh, so lovely. I mean, are there um, any um, historical references in the area to uh, witchcraft? Uh, I mean, because uh, it's a little bit out of the blue, isn't it, to come across all of these witch markings? Yes. I mean, the, there is a little. I mean, you've got to understand that this is a, um, a place where uh, there's, there's a number of mining villages around here. So there was mm. a lot of change happened. So, mm-hmm. so um, maybe some of the oral history may have been lost as a consequence of the industrialization. However, mm-hmm. um, the cave next door to us is known as Mother Grundy's Parlour. Right. And the, the story is that a wise woman or a witch lived in there. Okay. Um, but even that, um, bear in mind that all of these caves and all of the names they had, yeah. at some point they were written down. Mm. So at some point this became Robin Hood's cave. Yes. It could have been that this was Mother Grundy's parlour. Right. We don't know. Uh-huh. But yeah. um, at the point at which it's finally decided mm. and put on paper, mm-hmm. that's when they become stuck. Yeah. There are some stories that someone uh, claimed that another cave used to be Robin Hood's and not this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and if that's true, then we could also be in, the, in Mother Grundy's parlour. Wow. Um, in which case, um, a woman who, um, for some reason, their behaviour led them to be associated with some of the fears that we mm. may associate with mm. with the term witch and witchcraft. Um, uh, th- this whole idea of being scared mm. of a woman who may have specific knowledge mm. is uh, is fascinating. Um, so yeah, that's one of the few stories we do have in here, mm-hmm. is this um, mysterious woman. And we only really know her by name. Right. And we know that there were practices going on which led to her being um, uh, cited as an unusual woman in a cave. Okay. Read into that what you want. <laughs> but um, so I suspect something was going on yeah, here. Yeah. But we don't know what. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, some of these marks, um, are they part of a ritual? Are they mm. part of a, of um, uh, dealing with, uh, are mm. they part of a spell to keep things at bay? Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, is it in response to... Um, is it in response to what was going on locally, like bad crops or mm-hmm. illness? Mm-hmm. Or was it something more personal? Mm. I mean, they're protective marks. So right now, you could say you're standing in one of the safest places in the world, given that you are surrounded by protective marks. Yes. <laughs> so maybe this is never the space the where you... Yeah, well, never mind the fact <laughs> that we're standing over the edge of a, of a hole, which uh, is probably not the safest place to stand. But that aside... Maybe the space could then be in- interpreted as a place, a haven, a mm. place of safety. Mm-hmm. So that if you yourself had something to fear, yeah. maybe some an illness that you were mm. suffering with, mm-hmm. we don't know. Mm. But um, yeah, that's how any association that, that I'm aware of. <laughs>